right, so in the last lesson, what we saw was we can essentially hold on to the files that we create when we run a container by mounting uh, files in a directory from inside the container over to, this could really be any directory, but we're following this pattern of using the present working directory. So one issue with doing it this way is the files that were created are located directly on the host computer, right? So, you, you know, we, we're holding on to files in like uh, a directory on our host computer to be used by Docker. It would be nice if these files were inside the Docker ecosystem itself. Uh, the reason why is uh, this way we can't accidentally uh, like remove these files just from because we're messing around with our host computer. Uh, we would have to be more deliberate about it. And a way to do that is with something called volumes. So let's see that. Uh, if we just type in Docker, which might be hard, type in Docker. And now let's take a look. Okay, so here's these management commands. At the very bottom, you see this? Volumes. So we use this command to first look at images, then look at containers, and now we're looking at volumes. So volumes is like another one of these resources. And we can create a new volume by doing docker volume followed by the command, which for us is create a new volume. So do docker volume create. And now this time we'll just type in whatever we want. Um, so let's this will be volumes to hold our Jupyter notebooks. So let's type in like Jupyter notebook and press return. And it looks like that worked. And we'll make sure by doing docker volume ls. Okay, there's a lot of volumes there. But at the bottom, which I was, I'm surprised about, but that's okay. At the bottom is this one called Jupyter Notebook. That's the one that we want. Now, our goal again is, you know, when we boot up this uh, Jupyter Notebook, right, we have this, if we look at the images, Docker image ls. We have this Jupyter SciPy Notebook. But we know that, you know, if we create these new files, then the second we delete them, they'll be gone. So the original way we solved this was by saying, okay, instead of storing these files directly inside the container, we're going to store them on the host computer. This time we'll store them in like a volume, which to me is just like a box essentially, but it lives inside the Docker ecosystem. So instead we want to store these files, not on the host computer, but rather inside this box, inside this volume, which is managed by Docker. Um, so let's see how we can do that. The way that we do that is really with essentially the same command that we used previously. So we'll boot up a new container with docker run. We're going to specify the ports with 8.9.9.9. Again, I'm just choosing a port that I think is available on the host computer, mapping it to the port on the in the container where we're supposed to like access the Jupyter notebooks. And we do that dash v flag, right? The dash v flag previously we did the string dollar sign present working directory colon. This was where the directory that we we're mounting the like the host directory to the slash home slash jovian slash work directory in the container. And then we did the uh, Jupyter SciPy notebook. I cannot remember. Let's Google it. Jupyter. SciPy Notebook is what it looks like. Yeah, Jupyter SciPy Notebook. Jupyter slash SciPy slash Notebook. All right, so this is what we did previously. What we want to do now is instead of the quotation marks, we'll just put the name of the volume, Jupyter hyphen Notebook. So now we're saying mount any of the files in this container, in this directory of the container, to the volume itself. Let's press return. And Jupyter, and I should say Docker knows that we're talking about a volume here because it's to the left of the colon and there's no quotation marks about it around it. That's really it. Now to access this, we will go to uh, copy the URL and change the port to 8999. So let's go here, paste this, but we'll change the port to 8999. This time we will not see any files because we're connecting 
to our volume, right? And our volume currently, the Jupyter Notebook does not have any files in it. But if we create a new file, so let's create a new file, we'll call it sample uh, one. This looks beautiful. Okay, now we'll shut this down. Now, if we want to hold on, like, you know, boot up a new container and now read the files from the volume into this folder, we just run the same exact command. Okay, so docker run dash p, map the ports, dash v, say, take the contents of this volume, put that in this folder, boot up our container. So let's do that and we will do this process again of just changing the port number. Copy this whole thing. We will change the port number. Go to work and there it is. You see that? So just to be clear what happened here and let's open it up. We should see that number one. Okay. So what just happened was we shut down our container but we store the contents of uh, that directory inside a volume. And when the container shut down, the volume still existed. Then later, we booted up a new container by running uh, this command. Okay, we booted up a new container by running this command, but we're mounting, right, this volume into the folder on the container. So when I go to slash home slash jovian slash work, inside that folder are the is the contents of the of the volume in, in other words is this sample.ipynb file so this works just like we saw the bind mounting work the only difference really is that we're doing this in a inside a volume right we're mounting the contents of a volume instead of just a directory on our host computer so what are the benefits of doing this? Like I said, it's essentially that you know we are staying within the Docker ecosystem. And this way, we're less likely to just like accidentally remove some files that are you know being used uh, by a Docker container by that we would want to uh, place into a Docker container. Uh, we can actually deploy, I believe, volumes to the cloud, so we can deploy our data to the cloud. Our data is encrypted by default inside a volume. Um, so oftentimes the preferred way is to use a volume. And again, the way to use a volume, all you do is do docker run dash p, the name of the volume, and then the folder in the container you want to mount the volume into. One other note is you can create a new volume on the fly by just typing some word here. Okay, and if this word, if the volume does not exist, it will create a new volume for you.